recently, HPE, speaking of private 5G, completed its acquisition of Athenet. And we had the opportunity, uh, HPE Discover, to talk with uh, some of the key uh, HPE uh, decision makers in that uh, acquisition. And th th clearly, uh, HPE understands where the market is evolving toward. And certainly, when you're in a pro uh, targeting the enterprise space, you need a good private 5G story. And one thing that I think is important here is that when they completed the acquisition of Athenet, it just wasn't about the private 5G, but also combining private 5G with Wi-Fi. And so that plays to uh, what we believe is HPE strong suit in the Aruba networking part of their portfolio. Clearly, Aruba is a bona fide Wi-Fi uh, supplier technology. And what uh, we're seeing more of is it can be called private public blending of uh, these implementations. If you're a large enterprise with you know, distributed facilities where you have a lot of outdoor resources to support like a, a mining operation or a maritime facility, yes, Wi-Fi makes sense. And for example, the indoor facility, the enterprise is already familiar with, it's been using it for many years. But then you can come along and use private 5G or private 4G and 5G as, as needed to really reach uh, those long distance points because you know, Wi-Fi isn't simply designed for that. And so we're, we're anticipating more uptake of that uh, important combination of technologies. And I think a couple other benefits that HPE gains with this acquisition is that uh, Athenet is already a proven player in this field. It has over 450 deployments. So uh, in key verticals like healthcare, transport, logistics, uh, utilities, as well as government, you know, some of the um, verticals that I, I just touched on. But I think uh, what's important here is that for Athenet, uh, I think the acquisition uh, was pretty much a no-brainer because what is interesting about this market, it's hard to say how it will break out, even though it will grow overall. Now, there will be some enterprises that prefer to do their own private 5G implementation, but clearly there's a telco play here because the telcos have all this built-in expertise and knowledge over decades related to radio spectrum. Related to radio technologies, how to optimize the RAN and so forth. So this is something that could be a strong suit for them. We're seeing uh, more of that. And then there's the cloud providers, and then there could just be uh, scenarios where all three of them are working together at a fundamental level, or two of them are basically, you know, the cloud provider and the telco are working together to support uh, the enterprise's private 5G implementation. So all these variations requires a major supplier like HPE to be able to address all of these potential scenarios, regardless of how quickly the different segments grow and so forth. And uh, Steve, you're at HPE Discover as well. Uh, what was your impression of, you know, HPE's overall approach and, you know, their potential impact on uh, the 5G space? Well, I mean, I think when we think of HPE, we think about them in the data center. We think about their storage mm -hmm. portfolio. We think about their compute portfolio. We think about them, the Green Lake sort of set of offerings. Don't think we naturally drum jump to Aruba and the networking space. And I think we, we had some time at HPE Discover where this, the, the marketing leadership talked about a, a rebranding exercise that's going to be going on. And I think what I took away was, and also from Antonio Neri's keynote, of how central networking is going to be to the new HPE as, as they kind of reimagine. I think this further this Athenet acquisition sort of furthers the focus on Aruba. Um, I think it makes sense for all the technical reasons that you describe. I think HP's got the brand permission to do more in this space. I think bringing that as a service kind of green lake component to it is going to be fascinating for me because I think people are going to be deploying a lot of infrastructure at scale over the next three or four years do you want to do that on a capex do you want to do that on a nurse a service model i think the market's voting with its dollars there and is going to want to do that as a service so i, th I think this makes sense from a technology point of view as you described you're the expert there but it makes sense to me from from that perspective but i think it also fits into the wider strategy from hpe i think aruba is going to be more central to them going forward and if they can couple that with what good progress they've been making with retooling their business not only the technology but retooling their 
sort of financial systems and their reporting structures and their kind of market efforts around GreenLake. I think that the two make perfect sense to me. So I think for the technology reasons you described, this makes sense. All the things we were talking about around um, edge and the explosion that's going to happen and that confluence of factors coming together play into this same discussion. But I think it makes sense for me on a wider strategic level. As I say, just the amount of airtime Antonio gave networking as part of his keynote. You know, we, we sit in a lot of keynotes and those don't come together by accident. They don't pick topics at random. People don't freestyle those keynotes. There's a lot of thought and effort to align that sort of precious keynote, maybe hour of time to be aligned with the corporate strategy. And I took away but how much of that keynote was focused on networking and where HP was going. I think he pulled a couple of guests up onto the show floor, that, onto the stage that really helped reinforce that message as well. So I think this is interesting for HPE. I think we're going to see more from them in the space and it makes sense to me. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, you had uh, a couple of great points, uh, Steve. Uh, one is this certainly involves HPE GreenLake. And mm -hmm. so HPE GreenLake will definitely be playing a pivotal role in, you know, being able to support uh, not just, you know, uh, for example, private 5G and Wi-Fi integrations, but also it's the edge computing aspects, the mm -hmm. hybrid cloud aspects, the security aspects such as SASE and so forth. So this, uh, again, is, uh, I think, a just great meeting of two portfolios. And yeah, it, it, you're right on. Uh, Antonio certainly prioritized the fact that GreenLake uh, itself is making uh, a lot more inroads with the overall market. Its presence is broader. I think it's over 10 billion in bookings now and mm -hmm. over 1 billion ARR. And so you know, those are our impressive takeaways, no matter who you are. And so it demonstrates that HPE is executing in this area and that uh, it could definitely play a very strategic role for many uh, organizations out there in terms of how they want to optimize private 5G for their own specific uh, use case needs. And that requires HPE resources, channels, service support capabilities, and so forth. So I think that is uh, a definite thumbs up uh, on that particular uh, move. Well, I think and that you, you hit on a point there that's worth sort of double clicking on. HP's got a huge channel and mm -hmm. tens of thousands of customers bringing that route to market to the Athernet to technology is going to be huge. I mean, I can see that instantly being additive to this portfolio. HP's got a lot of established contractual relationships with clients. It's got a lot of existing soft, um channel partners signed up globally so from the route to market and go to market perspective it's it's very easy to bring a new product through that very established mo go to market model it's a lot harder to build a go to market model and bring a new product through it so i, I think that's going to be additive for, for hpe and athernet going forward and, and the overall ecosystem, uh, you know, more competition for, say, you know, private networking uh, market leader Nokia, uh, but also, you know, all the other providers out there that are uh, targeting uh, what is called the private 5G space. Now we know most of these deployments are still 4G, at least you know, 80 percent uh, from uh, my perspective. But we know uh, private 5G will eventually become a bigger portion of that. And that's where, you know, where the investment dollars are going. You know, it's a no brainer. If you can use private 5G, uh, then you would go with it versus, uh, you know, uh, a pre 5G implementation for certainly those use cases we touched on, the ones that require the lower latency, the across the board security, and certainly the greater bandwidth and so forth.